the, somebody who's in the casket, if you slap them in the face, what will they do? No, they don't do anything. They don't do any. I've never done that. Praise God, because we re, uh, we're reverent and, and, uh, towards people, and we love people and everything like that. But what if you holler at them? What if you holler at a dead person? What, what's going to happen? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing can happen. Nothing can happen. When you say something mean to a dead person, what, what's going to happen? No, nothing. Absolutely. You're real quiet here today. <laughs> Praise God. So let's go ahead and pray as we get in the word. Amen. So, Father God, we ask your blessing upon your word. Father, I pray you give me utterance today in your Holy Spirit. And I pray this word minister to each and every person that's here. Father, we just thank you and praise you. Hallelujah for your Holy Spirit. And, Father, uh, we ask your anointing upon your word. Help me speak. as I open my mouth. I pray I would speak the oracles of God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said... Amen. For example, I grew up in the Catholic Church. Many of you have shared this before, and I shared this at the outreach uh, a couple weeks ago out in the parking lot. Okay, uh, I, I I was raised Catholic, and and you know what? I I grew up very religious, and and I was also water baptized as a baby. My parents water baptized me as a baby. I know some of y'all grew up Catholic. How many grew up Catholic here? Okay, I, and they water baptized me as a baby, and I and then they brought me up in the church. And actually, when I first started going to church, they would speak Latin. You, you know, they speak Latin in church, and uh, and uh, and I didn't know what they were saying, and so I went up and asked them. I was just a little boy, like five, six years old, and said, "I don't understand what they're saying." Guess what they said? You don't need to understand. Uh, okay, that we were talking about that yesterday at that conference we went through. They said, the priest knows everything and you don't need to know anything. I was like, oh, okay. And, and they said, we just trust in the priest. And I was like, oh, okay, uh, that's what my mom and dad said. And they said, Chris, just be quiet. Don't be asking questions like that for, uh, you know. <laughs> and so <clears throat> I grew up and I went to confession. First, I had to go to confession. You had to go to confession when you're a little boy. I was like five or six years old or something like that. And I had to go to confession and confess my sins. And, and, I, and I didn't know anything about sins. And they, they said, well, you got to confess your sins, Chris. And I said, well, I don't know if I have any. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know some people are there today? They, they don't even know if they have any out there in the world. They're like, I don't even know if I have any sins. And they said, well, do you ever fight with your little brother? And I said, oh, yeah, I fight with him almost every day. And, and then they were like, well, that's, that's not, you're violating the thou shalt not kill commandment. And I was like, oh. And I was like, oh. And they said, do you ever disobey your mom and dad? And I, I said, oh, yeah, I do that one almost every day, too. And they said, there you go. You got another good sin there in there. And, and, and then I mean, they was like, do you ever eat too much? And I said, well, that's obvious. You can tell by looking at me. And, and they said, well, that's another sin. They said, so now you go into the priest and you confess these sins to him. Oh, okay. And so I went in and priest and he confessed those sins to him. And he said, yeah, I would be forgiven if I said like five Hail Marys and two Our Fathers. You're all getting quiet on me. Uh, okay. But what did we just sing? We just sang about this morning the precious blood of Jesus that washes away what all of our sin. So, uh, so, uh, uh, so anyways, I, uh, and then I, later on I went to communion because they told me to go to communion and it sounded good because my mom and dad told me I had to do that. And so that's what I did there. I did, just did whatever. I tried to be a good boy and do what my mom and dad said. And I made my confirmation and I went to church every Sunday and I tried to be good and I tried to keep all the laws. But there was only one problem. I was not born again. I was not born again. In, in Romans 12, two, uh, two, two, 12 says, For as many have sinned without the law, and will also perish without the law. And some people say, Well, I, we didn't have any law. I grew up with nothing. Pastor Chris, I didn't go to church at all, so I'm good, right? And it's like, no. No, you're not good if you didn't grow up with any law. You didn't grow up any rules or regulations. Some people say, well, we're all good. We, uh, no, because uh, um, uh, you, you st even sin without the law. And all sin in the law, so we'll be judged by the law. But Jesus said, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We all must be born again. Uh, okay, and then he said, do not marvel, I said unto you, you must be born again. It says, yet to those who receive him, to them he gave the power to become sons of God. And then you're not walking dead anymore. 
You're not walking dead anymore. Now, I did that when I was 17 years old. And many of you here have different ages when you did that. Some younger, some older. You know, praise God. But it's the most wonderful thing when somebody becomes a new creature in Christ Jesus. Okay? In Romans 6, verse 11 says, Likewise, I say unto you, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus. So then after you become born again, you got to reckon yourselves to be dead unto the sin. That means you don't sin any longer. Amen? And, but that now you can do it because you have the power of the Holy Spirit to help you not to sin. Where before, when you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit, you're bound to do it because you have this sinful nature. But the Spirit, you want the Spirit, man, really strong inside of you to be stronger than your body. Be stronger than your body. And you want your mind to line up with the Word of God, not with what the world says or, or tradition says. In Romans 6, verse 13, it says, and, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Romans 8, 2 says, For the law, spirit of life in Christ Jesus, has set me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. So you don't have to sin. Yeah, because you're, he makes you a new creature. You're not a sinner anymore. You're a Christian. You become born again. You don't have to sin anymore. You don't have to do it. See, before I thought I had to do it, that I had to do it. I had to, well, I had to sin because I'm a sinner and I have to sin. That's what sinners do. Sinners sin. Dogs act like dogs. Cats act like cats. Sinners sin. But no, we're not a sinner. We're a new creature in Christ Jesus. We're new creatures. We're born again. We're born again. And we don't have to do that. In Romans 8 verse 10 says, And if Christ is in you, how is Christ inside of you? Christ is inside you by the Holy Spirit. He, he lives inside of us. Christ, the anointing of God, is inside of us. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And, and the just shall live by faith. And that's how we live. The just, the righteous, live by faith. In Romans 8, 11, it says, But if the Spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. So the Holy Spirit's in, in you, the same Holy Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. And the Bible says it will quicken your mortal bodies. It will heal your mortal bodies the more we yield to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we have that life inside of us and the Holy Spirit will help us. Amen. Now, what do we need to do? We need to believe. Oh, I don't believe that, Pastor Chris. If you don't believe it, you don't receive it. If you believe, you receive. If you doubt, you do without. And if you confess, you will possess. If you believe, you will receive. Are you with me? And, and, and that's how we got saved. Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised from the dead, that you'd be saved. Amen. So you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Say this. Say Jesus is Lord. So you confess that he is Lord. Not situations. Not sin. Sin is not Lord. Drugs and alcohol are not Lord. Jesus is Lord. Amen. And, and a lot of times when I go to hospital, I'm praying for people. I prayed for three people on Friday. Uh, uh, I, it was Friday. No, it was Thursday. I went in to visit three people on Thursday and pray for them. I, I, and I ask them, who's Lord? Jesus. Is, is Jesus Lord over cancer? Is Jesus Lord over cancer? Yes, he is. Is Jesus Lord over sickness and disease? Yes, Jesus is Lord. He is Lord. So God is bigger. And when you have God on your side, man, you, you, be all, you got all heaven and earth helping you. Amen. It, now, what, uh, Ephesians 2 verse 1 says, you, And you he made alive who were in trespasses and sins. So before it was like that, that tra track, you were like the zombie going, ah, ah. But you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. And you're alive. And you're not in your trespasses and sins anymore. He took them away by the blood of Jesus. We, we don't have them anymore. Amen. So what, what we need to do too, then you go, yeah, how come I have problems? Because we have to take the thoughts captive. And 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. Uh, and we take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So when you, your mind goes like, well, just let them have it. You know, when somebody does you wrong, just let them have it. 
we were driving over here today, too. Some lady was stuck at the light, you know, and, uh, and Elliot and Nathan were with me, and, and the lady pulled over, and, and they were in the left lane, they weren't going. So I just honked my horn a little bit, like, hey, okay, quit, quit playing on your cell phone, get moving and everything. The person, lady was really mad at us. So we pulled over, and, and she, she, she uh, gave me the finger. Now, we were discussing which finger it was. It was a, is it the middle finger or the pinky? Uh, uh, some of us thought it was the middle finger. Or the other th- people thought it was the pinky. And, and then, but if they give you the pinky, I told him what that meant. My next door neighbor, he came over the street and he, gave, he came over. He was five years old and, and he said, see my pinky? I said, yeah, I see your pinky. He said, gee, you're stinky. <laughs> 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 so that's what giving the pinky means. <laughs> and he, and he, then he came over. He said, see my thumb? I said, yeah, see you. He said, gee, you're dumb. <laughs> uh, or, or whatever. But, li, li, but listen, uh, but how did, how did I react? I was like, well, God bless him. God, God bless him. We don't want to react. We got to take every thought captive. Don't want to pull over and pull them over and get an argument and then pull out a gun and shoot me dead. Shoot me dead. Right? That's the world way. Got real quiet here, huh, right? No, we we don't want to do that. Or then, what, what if somebody? Some sometimes people get tired, and when they get tired, sometimes what? You ever notice? Sometimes when they get tired, they get grouchy. Huh, you ever noticed? And I, you know, and as husbands and wives notice that a lot, when the other one, and then they get grouchy, and they get gr- mostly grouchy with the one they love the most. Like, leave me alone! I'm tired. And it's like, okay, I, I, and then I know sometimes my flesh, the old man will try to rise up. And I say, no, Chris, take that thought captive to the obedience of Christ. I better not do that. I say, oh, honey, I love you. You need to, here, why don't you sit down on the couch? <laughs> Amen. You're all getting quiet. <laughs> Am I preaching good or what? Amen. Amen. So we have to take control of those arguments, those thoughts. Amen. So, so are you dead to the old man is the first thing I shared. Second thing I shared, are you dead in your trespasses and sins? Are you dead in your trespasses and sins? What's the answer? No. And hopefully it's a no. If you're born again, it's a no. Right? Are you dead in your trespasses and sins? Come on. No, there's three people. It's no. Come on, come on. Are are you dead in your trespasses and sins? Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. (laughs) No. I mean, no. What am I doing? I got mixed up. (laughs) You you kept going back and forth. No, the answer is no if you're born again. Now, if you're not born again, yes. The answer is yes. So the answer should be no. So everybody say one, two, three, no. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. We got it. <laughs> we got it. You're not dead in your trespasses and sins. And, but the problem is sometimes, uh, you, you know, uh, what Kerry Ten Boom said, just because uh, a mouse gets in the cookie jar doesn't make it a cookie. Uh, right? Just because a mouse gets in the cookie jar doesn't make it a cookie. Right? Uh, what, what, just because somebody comes to church and they sit in the chair, that doesn't make them a Christian. Right? right? What makes them a Christian? They'd be born again. Yeah, my mom and dad drag, dragged their whole family to church all the time. I'm glad they did. But we weren't all born again. Uh, hello? And I praise God that we're all born again now. Thank you, Jesus. And they were just trying to uh, train us up in the good and right way. And when they were old, we were not to depart from it. So Ephesians 2 verse 5 says, Even when you were dead in trespasses, uh, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace are you saved. Amen? By grace. What is grace? Unmerited favor. God's riches at Christ's expense. We got the unmerited favor from, from God through Jesus Christ. And Ephesians 2 verses 8 says, says what? For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works as any man should boast. You can't brag about yourself. It says, but we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which we hath, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That's what we went, talked about at that, the seminar we went to yesterday, that we're going to do good works. Are we going to do good works? Yeah, amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're going to do good works. Yeah, turn back to your neighbor and say, I'm going to do good works. Say, I say, I'm going to do good works. You're going to do it, right? Because you're determined in your heart to do good. 
because you're born again. And God wants to use you to do good works so that his Father in heaven may be glorified in heaven. And if I, Ephesians 5 verse 14, uh, um, Apostle Paul wrote this to the church in, in Ephesus. It says, awake you who sleep. Sometimes Christians are sleeping. They're like, we have to wake up. We have to wake up and not be sleeping. Especially in these days. Listen, the world is going crazy, right? We need to be awake. We need to be awake. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. And that's also me, uh, people, but it was written to the, pretty much the church that God, would, God will show us the way. Jesus will show us the way. Colossians 2.13 says, And you being dead in your trespasses and sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made us alive together with him and has forgiven you all trespasses. He for, has forgiven you everything. So, but the, you know, the devil tries to come to us and say, Oh, remember you did that when you you were 15 years old. <laughs> you know, you're not forgiven. Remember when you threw rocks at your neighbor's house and smashed the window? No, maybe you didn't do that. <laughs> but guess what? If you're born again, you ask God to forgive you. Guess what? You're forgiven. You're forgiven. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You remember when you did that bad thing? I was in sixth grade. I got in trouble one time in sixth grade. Uh, and a and, uh, teacher told me, get up, uh, you go to the principal's office. This is my first time getting sent to the principal's office. So I went to the principal's office, went in there, opened the door, and just sat down in the chair. Okay, hey, you know, I didn't know you had to check in or something, you know. I just sat in the chair and nobody ever talked to me. I sat in there, chat in the chair, chat in the chair, and then went boop. And I figured, okay, I better go to the next class. So I got up and went to the next class and nothing ever happened. <laughs> Thank God for his grace and mercy. <laughs> <laughs> thank God for his grace and mercy. Say, thank God for his grace and mercy. A amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. A amen. We, we got a merciful God. God is so good. But as Christians, we need to have a good foundation. And Hebrews 6 verse 1 says, Therefore, leaving the, 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 the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again. But these are the foundations here. Foundations from repentance from dead works. So we repent from dead works in a faith towards God. Have faith towards God. We have faith towards God. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. And that he's the reward of them that diligently seek him. And it says of doctrines of baptism. So there's baptism in the body of Christ. There's baptism in the water. There's baptism in the Holy Spirit. Laying out of hands. Uh, okay, and then we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And we lay hands on people when they're, they're being separated and, and, and ordained into the ministry. Uh, okay, and so there's laying on of hands and, and, and resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Uh, amen. And our, our, when we die, our spirits go to heaven to be with the Lord, but our bodies are here. And then on the final trump, the trumpet's going to sound and dead in Christ are going to rise. People aren't sleeping in the grave like in uh, that movie uh, uh, Hocus Pocus. You know that movie Hocus Pocus? They have the thing there with Beth Midler and all that. The movie came out like 25 years ago or something, 30 years ago. And they're like, and the guy wakes up. Oh, oh. Oh, man, that was a long nap I'm taking. No, they're not taking a nap. Okay? They're either in heaven or they're in hell. See, that's wrong. There's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. Okay? So, so there, there is resurrection of dead and eternal judgment. So in the end, there, we're going to all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, Hebrews 9 verse 14 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, say the blood of Christ, who, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. That our conscience is clear, that your conscience needs to be clear. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. That we can serve God with a good conscience. If you do somebody wrong, you need to ask to say, please forgive me. It's just that simple. And you have to mean it. And you have to ask God to forgive you. All right? Now, that was my second point. So my first point is, was what? Are you dead to the old man? What, what's, what's the answer to that one? Should be yes. Say yes. Yes. Uh, no. uh, are you dead in your trespasses and sins? No. Say no. 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 This one is, who do you know who needs to be saved? 
we, we know some people who need to be saved, don't we? Yeah, we know some people who need to be saved. Okay, and, and Hebrews, so what we need to do, we need to pray for them. Pray for, pray for those people you, you know who need to be saved. Pray for people who you know that just might be saved, but there's, something's just not right. Right? You need to pray for them. Okay, and, and witness to them if you can. Tell them about Jesus. Amen. Tell them, tell them the good news. In Hebrews 13, 20, it says, Now the God of peace who brought up uh, our Lord Jesus from the dead, the great shepherd of sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Uh, 1 Peter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again to, li to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We need to give people hope. We need to tell people about Jesus Christ. Amen. First Peter 1 verse 21 says, Who through him believe in, in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. And First Peter 4 verse 5 says, To give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. We're all going to stand before God someday. We're all going to stand before him and Jesus Christ someday. Amen. So we want to have the right answers. When he says, why should I let you into heaven? And you, and you say, because I believe in Jesus Christ. Because I believe in Jesus. 1 Peter 4 verse 6 says, For this reason the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but to live according to God in the spirit. So the last thing I want to share here this morning is we must preach the gospel. And I encourage you to be a witness. Be a witness to other people. Okay? Tell them that Jesus loves them. Tell them that God loves them. Amen? Tell them that God loves them. Tell them that Jesus cares what they're going through. Tell them that God sent his son, son Christ for them. Tell them that Jesus makes us alive, that they don't have to be walking zombies. I'm like, what? Yeah, we need to tell them. See, people understand what, what I'm talking about this morning. They understand what we're talking about, uh, right? In, in Acts 2, verse 21, the Bible says, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And what's the name of the Lord? Jesus. That the name of the Lord is Jesus. And Acts 4 verse 12 says, Neither is salvation any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men where we, whereby we must be saved. Then the name, the name is Jesus. I was, I, mean, I was trying to communicate to somebody that. They were like, well, Pastor Chris, almost this, this is what they almost say. They say, Pastor Chris, save me. I can't save you. I can't save you. I can't save you. The only person who can save you is Jesus. Jesus is the only one who can save you. What did Peter do when, when, when Peter was in the boat with the disciples and a storm came, right? And, and then he said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come unto you. And then, then Peter was walking on the water, doing the supernatural. And God can use us to do the supernatural. But then the winds blew and everything like that. Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and and he began to sink. I don't know how you begin to sink. <laughs> I guess when you're, when you're getting doubt, fear, and unbelief. But when I jump in water, I don't begin to sink. I sink. <laughs> I, I sink. I mean, I'm, go, I'm, go, I'm usually going straight to the bottom, <laughs> you, you know, and everything. But then he cried out. He said, Jesus, our Lord, save me. And Jesus reached down and saved him. Jesus did it. Amen. Amen. You know, when they used to come to the rabbi, they used to come to a rabbi in the Old Testament. They come, they used to come to the rabbi for a word. And the rabbi would give him a word from the Torah and give him a word like, this is the word of the Lord to help you. Hello? And that's what we want to go on. We want to go on the word of the Lord. A little side journey, but I've been meditating on this a whole lot, uh, how to help people the best way. Sometimes people say, the best way you can help me is giving me money. No, that is not the best way I can help you. 
Well, it sure comes in handy around here, bub. You know, yeah, for a day, maybe a half a day, maybe for an hour. But giving somebody the word of the Lord. Are you with me? Amen. And Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God, at the right hand of the throne of God. Romans 5 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're justified by how? By faith. It's just as if you've never sinned. We need to tell other people that. Second Peter 3 verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but as long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance in Romans 1 verse 17 says for there for in it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith and live by faith a amen praise God and, and John uh, 3 verse 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And he who, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is condemnation that his light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And we need to love the light and share the light with other people. Amen. So I want to encourage you. And this is the last scripture I'm going to share this morning. is out of Colossians chapter 3. And as it goes back to my song, ye are dead. Say, ye are dead. Ye are dead. Okay. It says, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So that old life is hidden. Uh, yeah, yeah, the old life is hidden. Now we got the new. Like when, uh, and it says, when Christ who is our life, appears. Then you also will appear with him in glory. It sounds like 1 John chapter 3. Huh? Therefore, uh, put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication. I mean, so we don't need to be doing that because the old man is dead. You see, yeah, but I, have, I remember years ago somebody talked to me, and if I don't fornicate, I'll just die. No, 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 I'm sorry. That is not true. That is not true. Uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetous and covetousness. Covetousness is, is when, like, gimme, 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 gimme. My name is Jimmy. Gimme, 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 gimme. I gotta have it. Okay. Uncleanness is uncleanness. It has to do with, you know, all kinds of un sexual uncleanness, lesbian, homosexuality, everything, uh, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Amen. So, so again, what did I say today? Are you dead? Are you dead? Are you dead? Huh? <laughs> I maybe you know, qualify it. No, you're not dead. You're living here in the breath. You're living and breathing, of course. <sighs> okay, so I'll Are you dead spiritually? No, no, you're, you're not dead spiritually. Are you dead in your trespasses and sins? No, not if you're born. How many are you born again here at this point? Are you born again? Praise God. Amen. Amen. How, how many want to be born again? Maybe you're here this morning and you, you say, Pastor Chris, I'm not born again, but I want to be born again. Is there anybody here who wants to be born again? Anybody? I see a couple of hands here. Come on down, guys. Come on down. 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 Praise God. That's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing. Praise God. We've got some people who are coming down and getting to be born again. Isn't that wonderful? Right, we're going to have some births right now. Amen. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on down. Come on down. Did, did you understand what I was saying today? Yeah, praise God. 